All right, Shalom. I'm thankful and I'm grateful to be able to come out here once again to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. This is based off of your father's genetic line. It's about paternal and agnate relations and which determines whether or not you are an Israelite. This is not a so-called black or white thing mingling those two shades together. You get gray, there are no gray areas when it comes to this ministry whatsoever. So I'm not out here teaching colorism, which is also why I come out here in the open because our people have been dispersed, have been scattered all throughout the earth and look like all nations under the sun and also to let these other nations know their future and their judgment as well. And before I get started, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. And what is his name? Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Wawakakwadash. Peace, blessings, and much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons, and daughters also. The water to Yahweh Shai, because without him endearing and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. All right? So there's a lot going on. Just like recently, there was another assassination attempt on Trump. I believe he was playing golf in Florida at his uh, Florida club. And there was a dude pretty much staking out for 12 hours plotting on taking Trump out so this is the second time there's been more assassination attempts on Trump than any president in the past 20 30 years all right so let's say Trump gets knocked off what is that going to do that's going to incite an uproar people are going to lose their minds all these so-called trump supporters but you know what's beautiful about yahweh by shami i was shy because everything is his will if he wanted to he can just knock off trump and kamala and there won't even be no election and just cause you know straight chaos in the cities all right the lord is going to do what he does but there's so much happening right now and if you ask me if he's already you know, looking at his second, um, you know, his second threat for his life within a short window of time. He needs to find some new friends. He needs to figure out what the hell is going on. All right. Because you got some snakes in the grass. Now, of course, he's juiced in. He is the devil. But Trump is also like a wild card. All right. And they don't like that. So I have some articles I probably won't read them in detail. I'll just go into them briefly. But here's an article that was posted September 17th of 2024, which I believe uh, I don't have my watch on me. And I'm using my phone, the phone that I normally bring. I didn't bring it. But I believe today is either the 17th. Yeah, today's the 17th. So this article was posted today. Dozens of Hezbollah members wounded after pagers explode in Lebanon. So imagine you looking at your cell phone and out of nowhere, it just blows up in your face. All right. Imagine a hacker with the ability to hack your phone and cause it to blow up in your face. Well, these are the times that we are in right now. OK, because knowledge has been increased. People have said, well, we've heard about the return of the Lord. We've been heard about that. If he was going to return, he would have returned by now. No, there's too much, you know, happening now that's never happened before. Plus, you have thermonuclear missiles that didn't exist at one time that are here now. The mark of the beast, which didn't exist at one time, it's here now. All right. The technology that we have today, at one time it wasn't here. A lot had to happen. Now we're finally in that season where we're going to see the return of our Lord and Savior. 
Dozens of members of Hezbollah were seriously wounded on Tuesday in southern Lebanon and the southern suburbs of Beirut when the pagers they used to communicate exploded, the national news agencies has reported. So let's go to another article that I have. Let's see if it lets me. It says Houthi missile reaches central Israel for first time. No injuries reported. So my question is this. How is it seeing that America is so great? Seeing that these Israelis are so great. How could they allow such a thing to happen? Although nobody was injured. That goes to show you, you know, you so-called Babylonians need to wake up. Your country it's not as great as you think it is, okay? Yahweh Ba Shemiah was shy is showing you over and over again that he has this place known as America dangling by a thin string. And it's just a matter of time. The things that you see happening in this earth is all a token or a sign of what's coming to Babylon the Great here in these times that we're in, okay? Another article reads, this was posted September 12th of 2024, authorizing NATO weapons strikes in Russia, U.S. prepares major escalation of global war. The United States and the U.K. are preparing to announce immediately, or in, excuse me, imminently, that they will facilitate Ukraine firing NATO weapons deep into Russian territory and the greatest escalation of the war with Russia to date. Within a matter of days after the announcement, long range missiles produced by the NATO powers and provided with targeting data from NATO countries could be raining down on Russian cities, clearly crossing thresholds set by Russian military doctrine for retaliation with nuclear weapons. So what's up with all this talk with nuclear weapons? What's up with all this talk of warfare, long range weapons, all this talk of division? Where's the peace? Because a lot of people, they'll say things like, well, we want to pray for America. We need to all come together. We need to figure this out. Well, why hasn't been, uh, why hasn't peace been figured out yet? Because Yahweh Ba Shemi Shai isn't bringing peace, but rather destruction. So let's go into some scriptures. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. And that's what's coming. Cataclysm, sudden destruction out of nowhere. Although we're giving you warning, the fact that you ignore us, destruction's going to come as if it happened suddenly because you ignored the messengers who came out here with the message to forewarn you of the destruction to come, okay? For when they shall say peace and safety, and a lot of you uh, Americans, you want peace, you want safety, you want things to bounce back to how it used to be, and things are not going to bounce back. You might hear these politicians talk about peace and safety. Peace and safety is not coming, but rather destruction, okay? Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And that's the season that we're coming into. A time where people are going to go from living this BS life they've been living, this repetitive cycle of madness, and then suddenly a great cataclysm, a great destruction suddenly is going to fall upon them out of nowhere, drastically. And with all these different articles, all these different events taking place, 
throughout the earth, people are acting as if nothing is happening. But what's going to move you American people to do something when things actually come and it's shown in front of your face? When things are too late, then you'll acknowledge and consider your ways. Okay? But until then, you're, you're very apathetic or void of any type of feeling or emotion towards this ministry. Let's go into the book of 2nd Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So you people are so stupid. You're so unfaithful that even with signs in front of you, you're still avoiding what we're telling you. You're still avoiding the message. You still can't comprehend. You're still void of this light because ultimately that's a good sign that the Lord is going to take you and destroy you. All right. Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction. And that's what's coming. We come out here and bring out this word and you people reject us. You look at it as old fashioned, it's played out, it's archaic, okay? It's uninteresting to a lot of you people. But what you don't understand, if you don't seek out the old path, if you don't seek out the ways of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, when these sudden events come, okay, when um, this society collapses, because this economy, the housing market, you know, these, these, um, People who are out here living a certain lifestyle, who are in all this debt, who are deceiving you into thinking that their life is great. All these things are going to come down. They're going to come falling down suddenly. And you people are going to be, you know, looking for answers and you're not going to have it because when the answers were given to you freely, when the answers were given to you, even with all the shame and the rejection that we had to go through. You're not going to receive it once the doors of repentance is closed unto you. You'll seek out the Lord when it's too late. But right now is, is when he's able to be found and you don't want to find him. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So that's what's going on right now, man. Wickedness has totally consume this earth to where when you do the right thing it looks weird it doesn't look right we come out here we're prophesying we're forewarning you of future events and you look at us as weirdos you call us evil let's go to isaiah isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20 woe unto them that call evil good and good evil so you'll call a false prophet a man of the Lord. And then you'll call a man of the Lord a false prophet. You'll look at somebody based off of their status in this world and not based off of their spirit. Okay? Because how you look at things is totally contrary from how the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son look at things. Okay? Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter and that's our people our people are contrary our people are ass backwards our people got their ass where their mouth should be and that's why all they do is talk shit okay and at the end of the day Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai is going to correct our people and he's going to correct our people in measure too Every last one of you wicked, evil Israelites who have rejected this gospel, who have made us enemies for the purpose of coming out here for your for your goodness, for your um, for your salvation in hopes that you make it. But you would rather cast us off. You would rather insult us. You would rather, you know, try to dog us out. But that's OK, man. 
we're not going to keep on dealing with you idiots too much longer. There's way too much happening leading to our salvation. And you're too stupid to see it. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. And verse 54. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west straightway, ye say, there cometh a shower. And so it is. So if you see a big ass rain cloud coming, for some reason you have the wisdom, you have the wits to know, okay, it's about to rain. But with all these different things happening in the earth, with so much happening, you can't see what's coming. With talks of World War III, you can't see that a nuclear rain is coming. You can't see what's coming because you're stupid. You can discern the season. You can discern when it's about to snow. You can discern when it's gonna rain. You can garden and plant crops and discern when your fruit is ready for the harvest. But you can't discern the times that we're in right now. How dumb can you be? When you see a cloud rise out of the west straightway, you say there cometh the shower. And so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be heat. It cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that you do not discern this time? How dumb can you be? You can discern all these other things, but you can't discern that we're at the end of the world. You can't discern that Yahweh Shemiah was shy has given us a message and we're telling you things that are not only going to happen, but things that are happening right now. Things that are actually intensifying right before your eyes right now. But you people think ignoring this somehow is going to cause things to bounce back. Okay, it's not going to bounce back. It's over for Babylon. It's over for this society. And it's just a matter of time before the majority of people actually see it. Okay, because the majority of people, they're idiots. Because Yahweh Ba Shemi Shai is blinding them. All right. Isaiah chapter 46. In verse 8, remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old. So we're supposed to remember the former things of old. But in your mind, oh, the Bible's old. It's archaic. It's played out. I don't want nothing to do with that book. We're in a new day now. That book is holding us back. That's how you people treat the words of Yahweh by Shemi was shy. When in fact, you're supposed to remember. You're supposed to come back to the ancient way. Okay? Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am the power and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, because he is known as the ancient of days, he has no beginning or end. And from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So the Lord's counsel is going to stand. And that's what I'm proclaiming. That's what I'm bringing out is the counsel of the, war, uh, the words of the Lord. I'm not out here speaking my own imagination. So if you were in your right mind, you would take heed to what I'm saying because you would think, okay, this man's not out there just flapping out the mouth, freestyling like Lil Wayne, which Lil Wayne is one of my favorite rappers. Don't matter, it's all vanity. But he's out here speaking the words of Yahweh by Shemiah was shot. Okay? And at the end of the day, guess what? It comes down to this, man. You Israelites, you're either going to see it or you'll see it through death and destruction. You'll see it once, once fear comes upon you suddenly while you're in the comfort of your home chilling kicking back you know playing madden playing nba 2k 
it's funny when a lot of you so-called uh, niggas so-called play video games or whatnot. Why is it always fucking 2K or Madden, man? You, you so-called black people are in a box. And why is it every time you get a box of shoes, it got to be Jordans, man? I like Jordans, but it's like you so-called black people are literally in a damn box. You're stupid as hell, man. Here it is, you so-called Negroes of the tribe of Judah are supposed to be the head tribe. And you're, you're a dead tribe right now. You're, you're idiots, man. And that's the tribe I come out of. So I have the right to speak about you stupid ass idiots of my tribe, man. The Lord is tired of y'all, man. All right? Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. And we're running. Okay? We have the word and we're bringing it out through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Whether you people hear or whether you forbear, you know, we got to do what we got to do. Because we're trying to make it up out of here. We're not trying to be destroyed with the rest of you transgressors who are definitely going to be destroyed together for the record for the vision is yet for an appointed time because there is a season for everything Yahweh Shai is showing us what season we are in and again you hypocrites can't even tell the season spiritually you can tell when it's going to rain okay you might be good at husbandry you have an idea of when your crops are going to sprout. Okay, you might be good at um, telling when winter is going to come in. But you can't even tell that America is about to be destroyed. You can't tell that Yahweh Shai is at the door. You can't tell that he's close because you're stupid. Okay, and it's, it's really insulting to our people how dumb our nation has become okay you are stupid children and rebellious you don't want to hear the laws of Yahweh by Shemi I was shy for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and we're at the end that's why it's speaking now and typically we've been at the end since Yahweh shy went to the cross but now we're at the end of the end because these prophecies are speaking now that didn't speak Back during the time of Yahweh Shai walking the earth. Back during the time of the Roman Empire. But the Roman Empire is back through the spirit of America. America is Rome reincarnated. Right along with other wicked evil civilizations before her. Okay? Don't tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So the Lord is coming. It's not going to keep on... Um, what you people call delaying or deferring because hope deferred makes the heart sick and we're sick and tired but nevertheless we're still waiting we're still patient because it's about enduring until the end that's how you get saved so with talks of World War 3 what does that mean? that means we're at the end because it's speaking when I bring out certain articles when you hear about certain current events what is that doing? That's the prophecy speaking. When brothers are bringing out the oracles, the words of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, what is happening? His words are speaking. And people don't even believe it. They can't even tell what's happening. Let's go to Proverbs. It might be Psalms, actually. Let me try Psalms, chapter 74, and verse 9. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. So if there was no prophet, there would be no sign unto you. But Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai has risen up the prophets. So the sign is out here showing you that the Lord is talking. I think I just saw a chariot. Hold on. 
like it's doing like it was doing something. Yeah, I might be tripping. I don't know. But if there was no prophets out here, if the men of the Lord weren't out here, you wouldn't have no excuse. Or excuse me, if the men of the Lord weren't out here, you'd have more of an excuse. But seeing that the prophets are out here, the sign is being shown to you, you don't have any excuse. But the reason why you Israelites don't understand what's before you is because we come in a certain spirit. And that spirit that we come in is known as the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth, this world can't receive it. Let's grab that. And I'll jump back to this. John chapter 14 and verse 17. I'm trying to see if uh, what I saw earlier does what it does again. Because if it does, I'm going to turn the camera. But it looked like there was a chariot showing out in the background. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So we're out here with the spirit of truth. And the reason why people avoid us, they act like we're not even out here. Okay. is because they can't receive the spirit of truth. The truth being this gospel is an actual spirit. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And that's how we're able to know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error is because we have the spirit of truth. We have Yahweh by Shem Shai. They're within us. They dwell within us, man. And that's why we're different from everybody else in this world. And Lord willing, we've been called and chosen from the very beginning, from the foundation of the world to endure, okay, and receive the crown. Psalm 74 and verse 9. We see not our signs, but you do now. There is no more any prophet, but the prophets are back now. Neither is there any, any among us that knoweth how long. And we're telling you now that we're in that time right now. We're in that season right now. So what is your excuse? What is your excuse? You have no excuse. And Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to remove all you stupid, ignorant Israelites who just constantly ignore this word. We're constantly telling you that we're at the end of the world and with everything happening, you're still trying to ignore it. You don't want to accept it because ultimately the Lord is rejecting you. Okay? Isaiah chapter 54. In verse 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So Yahweh by Shemiah was shy has created the waster, the nuclear missiles, the long range weapons to destroy. They're here right now. What is the problem? Why are you Israelites acting like what we're saying is so insane? Like it's so crazy. It's weird because even with something being in front of you and you still ignore it, or you still act like it's not there, that's when you become stupid. You can't even use not having faith as an excuse at that point because it's, it's even in front of you and you still don't believe. So this is deeper than you Israelites not even having faith. This just shows you Yahweh by Shem Shai has a controversy with you and he's blinding you because he wants to kill you. He wants to take you out. He wants to destroy you. He doesn't want you to see what's going on before you. Because if you knew what was really going on, then you would get your act together. But he doesn't want you to. That's why a lot of you Israelites are on the sideline BSing or your fake ass brothers who really ain't about this, man. Okay? And I'm telling you, man, Yahweh by Shem Shai is going to seek and destroy all you weak ass Israelites in this truth and outside this truth. He going to kill all you people, man, who ain't right in the spirit. Because a lot of you men ain't right. You hiding behind camps, okay? You hiding behind popularity, and the most high ain't fucking dealing with you. 
All right. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth in the coals and the fire, and that burneth, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy it. So Yahweh by Shemiah Shai created the weaponsmith. He put it within the weaponsmith's mind to create the nuclear weapon, being the German scientist who came up with that. Okay, just like when you look at Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, I think was his name. He was uh, the man who helped come up with the atomic bomb. Well, the nuclear bomb is far more um, destructive than the atomic bomb. The Heavenly Father gave these uh, men on Earth the knowledge to come up with these thermonuclear missiles. These are his missiles. These are his bullets, the Heavenly Father. He created these bullets through the waster because when you look at the name um, Esau, it means wasted away as he. Well, the waster created the waster. Yahweh by Shemiah Shai used the waster to create the waster to waste, to destroy. So since the waster is here, how could you say we're tripping? Did you not know at one time thermonuclear missiles didn't exist? Idiot. Which would have to make what? This a prophecy being fulfilled right in front of your face and you don't see it because you Israelites... You're stupid. You're insane, man. You're not intelligent. Okay? You don't have the, the mental capacity to, to think. Okay? Not when it comes to spiritual matters. You're spiritually discerned. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. So you'll say, well, if there's nuclear missiles and the nuclear missiles are created and America's going to be destroyed, well, what about you? Nigga, the nuclear missiles weren't created for the elect to be destroyed, idiot. They were created to destroy the Lord's enemies who aren't written in the book of life who even make it that far. Because a lot of people are going to die before that even happens. Okay? So, again, no weapon, even the nuclear missiles, that is formed against these shall prosper. Because these weapons are being created for the Lord's enemies not the Lord's servants. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord Yahweh, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So you got to take it up with Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, because our righteousness is of him. So if you don't like us, you don't like him. You got a problem with how we bringing out the truth, how we talk. You don't like that? We'll take it up with him. All right? Because he chooses who he chooses, man. He moves how he moves. And you people in this world, you're, you're narcissistic. Your opinions do not matter. Okay? If it is not backed by the Holy Bible, your opinion does not matter. Or if it's not inspired or encouraged by the Holy Bible, your opinion does not matter. And it's straight like that. Straight like that. All right. Let's jump to Matthews 24. Matthews 24 and verse 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, when Yahweh Shai spoke these words, this was going all the way back during the time of the Roman uh, Empire. Everybody in that generation passed. So what is this scripture speaking of or speaking about? It's speaking of those people who were back then are back here today. The 12 who were with Yahweh Shai if not all of them, most of them are back here today. All the believers who believed in Yahweh Shai back then, during the time of the Roman Empire, are back here today. And they're going to witness all these marvelous, incredible, fearful events take place. And then to ultimately see the great day of the Lord return. That's what we're coming into. All right? And that's a beautiful thing.
and I got a chariot above me, right above me, man. And Lord willing, when the day of destruction comes, I'll have a chariot right above me to deliver me up out of here. That's my hope. Okay. Verily I say unto you, this generation, speaking of this generation right now, we're in that generation right now. Because the thermonuclear missiles, they weren't back then. It wasn't time yet. Them thermonuclear missiles simultaneously are coming with our Lord and Savior and the host of angels. So when the disciples were questioning, is this the time when they saw, matter of fact, I'm going to have to grab that and ask. Long story short, it wasn't time back then. It's time now. This is that generation that's going to live to see the return of our Lord. Because all the prophecies are set in order and ready for play. It's just a matter of time. That's where we are. Okay? That's where we are in history. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. The nuclear missiles are here. The mark of the beast is here. Okay? Martial law and all these things are soon to come. The guillotines are already prepared man which goes into the beheadings that the scriptures talk about in revelations chapter 20 and verse 4 things are set up and ready so this is definitely the generation although there are people within this generation that will die before their time so to speak but this is the generation as a whole that's going to live to see the return of our lord you know the generation x's the millennials uh, uh generation z okay we're in those times, man. Definitely. The baby boomers. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11 and verse 50. That the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation because this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. So Yahweh Ba Shem Shai has brought you back in this generation to judge you. There's a chariot behind that tree. I'm going to show you. See it? Man, I know a lot of you hating ass men be mad at this, man. Even men of the circumcision who claim to be brothers. I know things like this be pissing you off, boy. Why it gotta be him? <laughs> Why it gotta be him? I don't even like him, man. He ain't a part of no camp. Right? Why it gotta be him, not me? I think I see another chariot flashing its lights. I don't know. Beautiful, man. So I'll read the scripture. And I'll leave it there for a second. You know how I like to do, man. See, the Lord be showing y'all signs. Showing you who he's dealing with. And I'm not, you know, bragging and boasting. I'm speaking through humility. The Lord is showing that he's dealing with me because he's that humble. And a lot of you men who got a problem with me, well, the Lord don't got a problem with me, clearly. Okay? Luke chapter 11 and verse 50. That the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar. And a lot of people, you know, they'll say that Stephen was the first prophet to be put to death. But really, he's more so like the first prophet kind of recorded to be put to death. But there's been many prophets before him that were also killed. And you're also killed by people slandering your name. People lying on you. Okay? Yeah, that's, that's beautiful, man. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. So this is the generation that's going to pay. And the Lord ain't playing with y'all, man. And that's why you're going to keep on, you know, let me get it on where my finger at. You're going to keep on seeing signs like this. All right? Why? Because the Lord is visiting the earth in which he made. That's why. And he's showing 
who his servants are. He's signifying who his servants are through signs and wonders, through men being on fire. OK, if you see a man coming out here diligently, he coming out here more than once a week. OK, and you have hatred for that man. You're a fucking demon because a lot of you, you have no room to talk because you're not doing that. And you're hiding behind camps, which there's nothing wrong with being in the camp. But you can't hide behind a camp and think you of the elect, man. And then you're going to try to insult and disrespect a brother who comes out here diligently more than once a week. OK, you don't want to watch his videos. You want to hate on that man. The Lord going to kill a lot of you niggas, man. All right. Yeah, I said it. I'm not a kiss ass Israelite. And I'm thankful that the Lord has given me that spirit because a lot of you men. You um, you are heavy into respect of persons, all right? And the Lord ain't dealing with that kind of spirit. Let's jump to Second Ezra. Chapter 12 and verse 36. Thou only has been meet to know the secret of the highest. So we've been given the secrets, the mysteries of the scriptures, which is also why I know, man, that's a chariot. That ain't no star. I mean, you can call it a star, but it's a chariot. All right. Whether you believe it or not, Yahweh by Shemi Shai has given his men secrets. That's how I'm able to see when I'm looking in the sky, chariots and know, OK, that is not a star. That's a chariot. But your common person, if they were to see it, they'd be like, oh, it's just a star. Because you're blind. The secrets have been given unto his servants, the prophets. And if you know anything about stars, okay, you would normally see a cluster of them together. You're not just going to see one star just hanging out by itself or a couple of stars hanging out. Okay? But at the same time, I've even seen chariots fill up the whole sky before OK, an innumerable amount of them. And the, the, the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai has given me the eye to tell the difference between a star, a so-called star and a chariot. OK, because the sky is is usually like grayed out. There's like a gray film in the sky. You damn near never even see actual stars. So anytime I do see what looks to be a star. It's a chariot because Esau is blocking out the sky with chemtrails. All right. And like I said, I got a chariot right above me. I wish you just beam me up right now. Just take me up out of here, man. Translate me into the kingdom of heaven. Get me out of here, man. Therefore, write all these things that thou hast seen in a book and hide them. And teach them to the wise of the people whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets. And that's the elect. But wait thou here thyself yet seven days more that it may be showed thee whatsoever it pleaseth the highest to declare unto thee. And with that he went his way. So the secrets are being made known to the Lord's servants, man. Like it or not. Okay. Let's touch on the book of Psalms chapter 119. Psalms chapter 119 and 126. It is time for thee, Lord Yahweh, to work, for they have made void thy law. So Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is working because it's time. We're in that season. We're in that day and age where prophecies are taking place. Things are taking place just as the Lord said. Okay? The Lord is doing His will. He's performing great miracles because that's what He wants to do. Let me get this chariot above me. Let me piss off my haters. I'm going to end up rapping.